Shalom, given all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Bahashem Rakakodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Peace and salutations unto the Akiam, the brothers pushing this truth throughout the four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and the freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that be scattered among the heathen that be like unto the speckled bird, I say Shalawam. And I say Shalom to the few but faithful sisters, the few sisters listening and learning. This is your brother Yerushalam from the GMS Prophetic Vibrations Camp. Out of Trinidad and Tobago coming at you with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakodash. Now this video is going to be entitled Sex is Marriage. It's not the same for men and women. Right? And this will be part one. <clears throat> right of, of um it's a two part series all right on this topic all right you know because um you know lately lately um i've been seeing some examples of um people you know and some some women coming into this truth not understanding you know or, you know waking up to the truth not understanding um that sex is marriage all right you know and um you know to understand <clears throat> the proper relationship between a man and a woman all right and a man and woman is not, are not the same all right and then this is very important to understand because a lot of people still are caught up with Esau's system thinking that you know they have to go into a church you know and and and, and the ceremony somehow you know makes you a man and wife all right which is a lie of the devil all right Esau Edom it's a big lie too and it's one that's been uh, perpetrated on our people for a long time all right so um i'll start a, i'll start on a scripture in fact let me start on a scripture in, in um let's go to deuteronomy because um let me go to deuteronomy here All right, Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 10. All right, and this this is a this is a this is a scripture. So I got this um from um, Apostle Taha on a video. All right, just to show that um you know, <clears throat> you know when you go to war, you know, and they, and they basically a captive, you cap, yeah, um, you capture a woman, a beautiful woman, and you desire for your wife, you know, and how you how you go about making her your wife, you know, according to the scripture, according to the law. Because Deuteronomy is, is part of the law, the first five books of, 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 of the scriptures, the Torah, all right, or the Torah, Deuteronomy meaning, meaning the second book of the law, <clears throat> all right. So let me let me let me um go into this here, Deuteronomy twenty one and ten. It says, "When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, all right, and Yahweh thy power deliver them into your hands, and thou hast taken them captive." And see us among the captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Alright, to thy wife. Now, if it's a woman of the other nations, she would be a, a, a concubine. She's not an Israelite woman, that is. Right, which is a, with concubine basically the means a lower level wife. Alright, but she's still a wife. Okay, so verse 12 says, Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house. And she shall shave her head and pay her nails. Right? The reason being is that those things like hair and nails, those things usually associated with idol worship. You know, there were many different um, um, festivals and rites that they had but they were in terms of worshiping the idols. So you know, cut off all that wickedness you know, and let it grow back afresh. Right? But she no longer will be worshiping those idols. But you have a bashing your shy. Right? And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month, right? So likely her father and her mother, you know, might have been killed by you or one of one of your colleagues, you know, in, in the war. Alright? In the battle. And after that thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband. Alright, and what that that say that that's go in unto her is actually what doing what? Is actually penetrating her right and be her husband and then you, you notice 
You're not hearing anything about um, going into the church, all right? You know, and signing papers and saying I do. No, that's not what that's not what marriage is. Marriage is sex, you know. And that's the importance in this time, you know. The, this devil, you know, he saw Edom. You know, he 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 been he perpetrated a big lie. You know, we know he's the father of lies anyway. All right. You know, you know, basically to destroy us. You know, basically, you know, this this guy, we know this guy has no um, morals, no values, no ethics. All right. You know, you know, and he just changed that. Same way how he changed laws, and he seek to change the times too. Right. He's seeking right now to. Um, to extend his time and his kingdom all right this is what's happening so the same way you change the definition of what marriage is all right which is sex it's seen plainly here let me read it over Deuteronomy 21 and 13 and she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month all right and after that Thou shalt go in unto her, which means what? Have sex with her. You know? Penetrate her. Right? And he and be that her husband. And she shall be thy wife. So that this is clear here. Alright? <clears throat> this is clear. Again. Um we're gonna um let me let me go, let me get another scripture here to illustrate this. Let's get Genesis chapter 24. And verse 67. All right, Genesis 24 and 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. In fact, let me. Yeah. Let's 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 just read 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca. Alright, and that word took is Lakak. Alright, which means to seize, to lay hold, you know, basically, you know, to, to, um, to basically to, 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 as you say, I believe it's the same word as rape, alright, so she, he took her, he literally took her by his hand, you know, let me um, go into that word there. Alright, let me see. Strong's H thirty nine forty seven. La cache. La cache. Right. La cache. To take. To get fetch. Lay hold. See. So he seized off and, and did what? Look. To marry. To marry. Take a wife. Alright. So he, he took her literally. You know, he took her in his arms and he began to make love to her. He, he had penetrated her. Alright. He took Rebecca. All right, and that's how and that's how he married her. <clears throat> Let me see. All right, and so let's read that over Genesis twenty-four and sixty-seven. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca, which means he had sex with Rebecca, and she became his wife. See, Any, anything about anything about wedding wedding ceremony wedding hall, you know, nothing. All right. He just took her, he had sex with her, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Now later on in this video, we're gonna see, you know, the the you know they're gonna illustrate on a carnal sense, alright, because we know is everything is spiritual, you know, why he loved her too, you know, and you know, and how the Lord put those things into place, alright, in the human body for that to happen. Right after sex takes place, alright, because sex is not to be taken lightly. All right, marriage or sex is a blood covenant. Usually, the man would penetrate or break the woman's high men. All right. Like, let me let me um look up the word high men. All right. It says a membrane which partially closes the opening of the vagina, and whose presence is traditionally taken to be a mark of virginity. All right. So that that. That is important because I'm the next scripture I'm gonna go into. Alright. So um marriage is a blood covenant. So the man um breaks the, the hymen, causing it to tear, you know, and causing um some blood to sprinkle, you know, 
on the, on the penis, you know, and also on the bed sheet, all right, or the sheet wherever they, wherever they lay in, all right. You know, so really, the first man a woman gets with, you know, really is her husband for life, all right. But what we know, we know in this generation is a wicked generation. You know, the Lord called this generation a generation of adulter adulterers. You know, this is why everything is all messed up. All right, this is why women have multiple men. All right, all right. So everything is a mess. All right, because <clears throat> it's, 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 it's so important. Let me, let, let me get some scriptures here. It's Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-two. It's important to understand. You know what this is? Deuteronomy twenty-two, and verse thirteen. It say, if any man take a wife. And go in unto her, which means what have sex with her, marry her, so called, right? Marry her, which is not so called, which it really is, and hate her, and give occasion of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not and made me know what she was not virgin. Alright? She was not virgin. Okay, um, then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity which mean what the bed sheet in which um the virginity was taken where, where it had the blood stains all right so it's the importance of having that to prove that their daughter was a virgin all right this is how important it wasn't back this is our heritage people all right you know this is how we could prove you know that you you have a a, a virtuous daughter all right and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. So notice there's nothing about, you know, alright, let me, let me see the papers. No, no, you don't want to see, it ain't nothing about no papers. Alright, you want to look, you want, they want, what you're looking for is the evidence of the marriage. Alright? The evidence of the marriage, which is what? The tokens of virginity, right? The blood stained sheet. All right. So verse seventeen says, and lo, he had given occasion to speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city, and the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him because why, he is a liar. All right, and they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver right, and give them unto the father of the damsel because he had brought an up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel right you know that's the importance of, of, of women being virtuous you know and keeping themselves for their husband you know and their husband and that that goes back again to our, our heritage again because usually the father is the one who chooses the man for the woman Right in this society, in this wicked society, all right, women leave the home, all right, unmarried, a lot of them, and even if they're home, you know, they 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 go with several different men, all right, all right, they go with different men because why? As we see in the video coming up, all right, when they make one bad mistake, when they when they ovulate and during this cycle, it leads to another bad mistake and then another one and then another one after that, all right, and they they basically. Some of them basically never get off the cock carousel. Alright? One wrong man after the other. And even if they get a, so, a, a, a decent guy who's willing to, to settle down with them, they can't pay a bond with that guy. Because they had too many. Alright? And, and what they think is good is actually negative and destructive even to them. You know, the type of guy they believe is good. Alright? So, um, continuing here. Um, because he had brought an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. Why? Because he, he penetrated her. All right, he wasn't getting away with that. He may put, he may not put her away all his days. So he had, she, she, she'll be his wife forever. All right, he can't divorce her. All right, but if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, all right, you know that they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house and the men of her city shall stone her 
with stones that she died. You no, know, this is the men. All right, the men of the city, not the women, right? Because she committed that crime against what a man. All right, she played the whore. Okay. Because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore. All right. With her in her father's house, so shall thou put evil away from among you. So, what's going on right now among our people? With women having sex with multiple men. All right. First of all, they're being harlots, according to the scriptures. A harlot is a woman who's had sex with more than one man. All right. Which is practically most of our women. All right. You know, and, and the scripture says, So shall thou put evil away from among you. So, this is evil. All right. It's an evil practice, you know, was taking place with our woman in this time. All right. And it all was orchestrated by Esau Edom. All right. When a sperm enters a woman, all right, you know, when the sperm enters the woman, all right, she takes on the man's spiritual essence. All right. You know, and, and this is because why? As I was saying before, firstly, it's a blood marriage, it's a blood covenant. You know, the hymen tears, all right, and blood is shed, right? The, the woman's blood, it becomes on the man, you know, and the man's blood also passes to the woman through the ejaculate, all right? Through men, when they ejaculate the sperm, the semen, right? Because there's a little bit of blood that, that, is, that comes out with the semen as well, all right? All right, and the spirit is in the blood, all right? The spirit, the spirit is in the blood. Let me, get, let me grab a... Um, couple of scriptures here's Leviticus chapter 17 and um, verse 11 it reads for the life of the flesh right the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your sin that's why, they, that's why they, they usually use the blood for the atonement of sins all right this is the reason why. Okay? For your souls, for it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. Alright? So the for the life is it life of the flesh is in the blood. What's the life of the flesh? The life of the flesh is the spirit. Alright, because the scripture says it's the spirit that quicken it. Now let's get let's get the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63. It says <clears throat> It is the spirit that quickeneth, right? So this is the spirit that gives life, that quickeneth, all right? Let me um, go into this here. Right, that to produce a life begat, to cause to live, to give life, to make a life, all right? So, so that life, you know, that blood is the spirit, all right? So... So part of the man's spirit passes to the woman, right? His essence, right? The woman then becomes becomes peer bonded unto you, unto the husband. This is how it's supposed to be. <clears throat> you know. However, through the punishment of the curses, all right. You know, and the daughters of Zion are polluted. You know, they're in a bad state. All right, they're polluted and crazy because they've had multiple men's sperms in their bodies. Alright? And the woman is not created to take on multiple men's sperm. Alright? You know, as a result, there's, there's several consequences. Alright? You know? There's several consequences. Right? Number one, you know, they can't pay a bond with one man. Once a woman has sex with more than 10 men, it's, it's scientifically proven that she has issues peer bonding with a man. Alright? Peer bonding with a man. Let me, uh, let me just get that word um, peer bond bonding. Let me see if I can get the meaning. All right. Peer bond. Right. Uh, of an animal or person form a close relationship through courtship and sexual activity with one. With notice, I said with one other animal or person not several all right you know you know even the animals have that order you know and somehow 
you know, especially Jake now in this time, me messed up. Alright, some of the other nations they still kept keep their the, the traditions. Alright. Like the Ishmaelites. Okay? Alright, so they can't pay a bond with a man. Alright? Point the next point is that they take on the spirit of all the men, the spiritual essence of all the men that they've been with. Alright? They, they, they take it on. You see the um the sperm cells carry the DNA. Of course, and a spiritual essence of that man. Of course, the blood as well passes. Okay? The blood passes. Let me get a scripture here for that. It says Matthew chapter 19 and verse 3. <clears throat> the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? This is Yahweh Shai going to speak here, and he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. And this is the one flesh that the Lord is talking about here. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore the Most High are joined together, let no man put asunder, no man come in between that. Alright? That's for life. Okay? And this is the this is the this is the one flesh that the Lord was talking about. That's why in the scriptures it says that a man should love a woman as his own body, his wife as his own body, because she is practically, literally, part of his body, because his DNA is all inside of her. All right, it's all throughout her. The, the, the sperm swim and bond to the brain, they bond to the spine, to your muscle tissue. Right, everywhere, she's changed. All right, a woman is changed. To reflect that man's spirit okay right. another point is the third point is you know they are con they get confused when they have multiple sperm they behave erratically they're out of control some of them get become very lustful you know some of them take on a male persona all right you know so they so they basically always finding mr wrong always on the cock carousel looking searching and never finding all right Alright, another important point, alright, in this is their womb is polluted, right? Because um because a woman retains sperm in her body, alright, sperm sperm are coated with vitamin C, so they last many days inside of a woman's womb and her body, right? And there are three types of sperm, and when they kill a sperm, they fight or fight other sperm. Okay? So they have a battle going on inside these women's body. Right, so one sperm fighting another one. All right, it's a battlefield in, in literally in their body, which can lead to a lot of health issues. You know, it leads to anaerobic bacteria forming. All right, you know, basically immune system problems. All right, because the immune system not recognizing these sperm, they're not with the man long enough. But it takes six months for, for, for a woman's body to recognize a man's sperm. All right, you know, therefore, what. Their, 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 their private parts, their vagina stinks. Alright? You know, and that's this is what's going on with a lot of these women out here. Alright? And this was going on, this is what's going on with a lot of these women out here. Let me get a scripture here. This is the book of um Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. It reads, And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Right, and this is a curse that the Lord put on them, you know, because the Lord knew they would be like this. Alright? And instead of a girdle or rent, alright, well a lot of them out of shape. And instead of well set here, baldness. Right, so all these things are traits of the Israelite woman. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty here, you know, your countenance will be darkened too. If you're doing this kind of stuff. Alright? It's serious. You know, it's not a joke. Okay, well, let me get Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 1. Right, it reads They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? So once another man comes, you know, um, 
puts his sperm in your body or comes in your body the, the land the land just like none to the woman is greatly polluted but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers yet return again to me say the lord so this is talking about israel too with, with your bashim your shy but it also goes into our woman with us right because all these women most of them are polluted right you know even the, even the woman of the elect a lot of the women of the elect you know they, they who will be of the elect they'll be polluted but your bashim your shy will pardon pardon them and change them all right and this is so powerful and real right so one more scripture here let's go to genesis uh in fact, I'll leave it there. No, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 24 and verse 4. Right? Um, her former husband, which sent her away, right? With the last scripture we was we reading about how um, you know, if a man divorced his wife's wife, right? May not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled, right? Where she after she she um had sex with another man. So you see, is the laws are for a reason. Yabashim yeah, Yosha know what he's doing. For this is abomination before your Abashim your Shai, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy power giveth thee for an inheritance. So when a man divorces his wife and separate from his wife, he's not to go back, because it's defiled with another man's sperm, another man's semen, right? Another man's essence. Alright? So let me let me go to a video here, you know, which is a powerful video, especially for these women, you know, to take in. You know, in this time, the sincere ones. So let's go here. The name of the video is When Women Have Sex with Multiple Men. Vicky, we live in this uh, hookup culture where much of our society, they think that they can just go on one night, one night stands and just have uh, consequence free relationships, sexual relationships. Well, it's interesting because that's a lie that abounds that. You know, we've come through the media and other things to believe there's no consequence to sex. And as long as you're contracepting or whatever, it's all fine. But we don't really understand how it is our bodies work. We need to recognize, for instance, that we as women undergo profound changes when we have sex with a male. That there are many things that change. It takes our body six months to make the adaptation to the sperm of our male partner. Because before that, we are in an autoimmune reaction. Our, our immune cells are, are testing. What is this? Is this an infection? What is it? Our body comes to, to conclude that this is our sexual partner and now has, has made an adaptation. The reality is that this allows us women to be without consequence in terms of when we conceive children with this male. Our body recognizes that this is with our partner. We carry cells from every child we ever conceive, so we carry the DNA of our partners the rest of our lives. It's an interesting question if I've had multiple partners and perhaps conceptions with multiple partners, that what might that mean to my body in terms of the immune system? Because I will now literally be carrying the genetic material of my partners contained in my children. We don't know what the long-term consequences of that are. So it even affects your children, all right? The DNA from, from other men affect your children, all right? And they don't even know the full consequences of it, all right? This is why in the ancient time, when a woman committed adultery, or even a man, they were put to death. Alright, because it's an abomination. You know, you could be affecting and polluting your children's DNA when you actually marry a man. Alright? The sperm has many antigens on it. And oh, let me skip forward. There are sorts of diseases. There's also the question, of course, of where does the sperm go, which can create some very uncomfortable things for the male. But there's more, again, also for the male. The reality is that seminal fluid, which we think of as kind of a carrier, it just kind of gets the sperm where it needs to go, is in fact biochemically very active. There are more than 30 different compounds that are com contained in, in the seminal fluid. Different kinds of sugars, things like zinc, which would enhance our 
for is women autoimmune systems so that we might not contract diseases from pathogens that would be present in intercourse. Um, all these different kinds of substances. There are also many, many hormones that are there. Luteinizing hormone, we think that's a woman to, woman hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, that's a woman hormone. 13 kinds of prostaglandins, some other things like dopamine are there. Why? Because we women absorb that material and we're changed forever. Every time we have intercourse with someone, if we absorb any of that seminal fluid, it's in our system for at least 15 hours. We're changed in a very real and concrete way. It changed to what? To one flesh with the man. All right, which is what the scripture says. The scripture don't lie. By this, this, this sexual intimacy that's there. Furthermore, the brain chemistry in both men and women is triggered with sexual intimacy. And we believe that because I say this, this is just a sexual encounter for pleasure, I'm not going to be changed, that it works. Our brain never gets the message that this has no consequence. The assumption on the part of our body is that sexual intimacy always has consequences, always has meaning. And as soon as we have this intimacy with this person, we trigger brain chemistry. We, we trigger, for instance, oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone both in men and women. There are other feedback systems there that make the brain feel good. Men, in particular, get, get vasopressin. This is a male hormone. We women have a little, but it's predominantly male. And when we have, we have sexual intimacy with someone, what happens to the male is this hormone now makes him have a preference for this female that he just had sex with. Hooking up, the sense that it doesn't matter, is physiologically an impossibility. All right, let me prove that in the scriptures. All right, what she, was, what she said is that um, when a man has sex with a woman, you know, he gets a, a preference to the woman, right? And we saw that in the scriptures when we went through Genesis chapter 24, verse 67, with our, with our, with our, our, um, our ancestor, Isaac, you know, when he went on in, when he took Rebecca, so it's Genesis 24 and 67 again, and Isaac brought her into his mother's tent, mother Sarah's tent, Salakia, and took Rebecca, right? He had sex with her. And she became his wife. Notice what it says. And he loved her. Alright. You know. So there's actually a chemical reaction in your body. That makes you love the woman more. When you have sex with them. Alright. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So what? The woman comforted him. Alright. Rebecca comforted him. So he loved her. So it's spiritual and it's physical. Alright. This is, this is the work of Yahabashim Yahashai. The wondrous work. So let's um let's jump forward in here in this video. Uh go to here. So lucky like, yeah, just bear with me a moment, yeah. Alright, here we go. Also that we women are very conditionable at the time of ovulation. This is some media effects research and they had shown an arrival. Now listen closely to this point, it's very powerful, all right? Like movie to, to women who are ovulating, and all of the women had an erotic response to this movie. They mentioned this is some media effects research, and they had shown an erotic movie to, to women who are ovulating, and all of the women had an erotic response to this movie. They showed the same movie to women at other phases. We, we have different sp stages of our cycle. We have the, the, um, the, follicle, the follicular stage when the little follicles on our ovaries are developing. We have the ovulation stage when one of the follicles breaks loose and the ovum is released in our body. And then the last stage is the luteal phase when this little, the little place on the ovary where the ovum was released becomes a major chemical factory, keeping the ovum alive to see if there is a pregnancy, and if there is, then keeping the baby alive until the baby builds its, its placenta. But this awareness here that during ovulation, we're arousable. They showed the same movie to a group of women at these other phases, and the, there was a, a consistent response, but it was that it was basically a very stupid, dirty movie. No erotic response. But the woman who saw this film once during ovulatory phase had an erotic response showing the movie now again at any point in her cycle. The anthropologists talk about the fact that this is perhaps why if we have sex with Mr. Wrong when we're ovulating, 
we now are hooked to Mr. Wrong. We all know that Mr. Wrong leads to Mr. Wrong number two. So this awareness of how this give and take, this dance, if you will, between men and women is so important. And it's so critical that we as women and men understand there's a lot more going on in our bodies than we've ever been told so that we can, A, make really good choices about this. Do I want my body to be changed by this male? In other words, if you, if, if you make... If you make if you choose Mr. Wrong the first time, it means you're gonna always be choosing Mr. Wrong. Alright? Which means what? Mr. Wrong is, is 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 the guy who doesn't take his responsibility seriously. You know, who wouldn't who who would just as they, as they would say pop you and leave you to be a single parent mother. Alright? You know, and this is who a lot of these women run down. Because why? They've made the first mistake they made was sleeping with Mr. Wrong in the first place, the first time, and after that, they'll always they always be on the cock carousel, you know, jumping from one Mr. Wrong to another, all right, and this is why, in the past, all right, this is why in the past, that um, the men or the fathers would choose the man for your daughter, all right. You know, because women can't choose for themselves properly. All right, women can't choose for themselves properly. <clears throat> All right, so this is so important. Let's continue. I'm going to have sex with him. What I am going to be changed by him, and we don't even know what some of the long-term consequences of this are, but we know that she's absorbing the material, and. You know, how do I want to live my life? How do I want to be changed by my partner? What consequences might there be if I if I make these choices where I have, you know, repetitive sexual partners? We don't know what some of these long-term consequences are. We do know, for instance, that the woman who has multiple partners in a short period of time may develop a, uh, an infection that's called bacterial vaginosis, which is a very serious I infection. And what happens is that the chemistry of, of her um, genital area has been changed, and now the bacteria that can grow there are what are called anaerobic bacteria. Those are always serious infections. Again, what we think is simple, what we think is without consequence, in fact, has serious long-term consequences. And, you know, the more I learn about this, the more um, I'm in awe that nature, God, has built us in this way to be complementary to each other, that we truly are changed by our partner and really become one uh, in terms of this. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah, fun. All right. As I was saying, this is why in old time, right, the father would choose for the daughter. Right, this is Sirach chapter 7, all right, and verse 25. It reads, Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter, but give her to a man of understanding. All right, so that is the reason why. So the man will be able to sift through and know a man who has understanding all right and you perform a weighty matter because why you know your woman your your your, your daughter wouldn't become a harlot all right you know it's, it's it's so important all right there's something else she said there you know about becoming one all right and this is this is this is exactly what you are your shy meant and this is why a woman can't have more than one partner you know but a man can all right because they build differently a man could love more than one woman all right this is ephesians chapter 5 and verse 28 it says so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies because the wife is literally supposed to be a part of your body you all your, your sperm is supposed to be all in her incorporated into every part of her body or tissue all right he that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the lord the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones so the same way we are members of 
you have a shy body your wife is a member of your body all right for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall become shall be one flesh all right if you go back to genesis 23 and 24 you see the same thing but i'm going to go to mark chapter 10 and um verse 6 Right, it says, but from the beginning of the creation of the Most High, the creation, so like here, Mark 10 and 6, but from the beginning of, crea of the creation, the Most High made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Why? Because of the DNA of the man infiltrates the woman's body. All right? And his blood, his essence. All right. What therefore the Most High are joined together, let not man put asunder. So this is it. However, this devil, right, you saw Edom orchestrated confusion by his wicked media in pushing this, pushing this thing like women on top. Women could be like men, all right, and go with several different men and have no consequences, all right. The wicked laws and the devilish doctrines, right. So the media plays a big role in this wickedness. The movies, the advertisements, everything. You know, this devil is against everything that the Most High sanctions his law. Right? You know, this devil be system. Alright? You know, you know, and this is why, and it, it's not only with him, it affects the whole world. Right? They say, they say the, the, um, which made the nations are mad. They're drunken. Right? With this devil wickedness. Right, even the, even the Arabic nations, the Ishmaelite nations, have been affect, have been affected by this devil, right? He pollute the whole world. This is Jeremiah, chapter fifty one. And verse seven, right? It says Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that had made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of our wine, therefore the nations are mad, right? They are mad because they are doing the same thing here. The women becoming like this, right? You know, but there is consequence. There is a consequence for this for for, the, for adultery. You know, the abashim you say, right? But in Esau system, there's no consequence, right? Because when a when a, when a when a woman commits adultery, she's supposed to be stoned to death, all right? But in Esau system, you know, it's not so. And also in Esau system, they prohibit polygamy. Right, and this is in order to proliferate this, this confusion and the pollution of our women. Right? Not allowing women to be married, more than one woman to be married to, to, to one man. Because naturally, even statistically, there are seven women to one man. So there'll always be women who are not married. You know? Which brings us to what? <clears throat> this this pro this proliferation and co of confusion and pollution it, it, it in turn destroys the Israelite family. Alright? You know, of course, in single parent homes, so we can never advance. All right, <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> and it's ironic because these same single parent homes are maintained by the same Israelite men through what through taxation and so forth. All right, because men are still the number one sex employed, being employed. All right, so with that, you know, you know, our uh, prayer, it was a, the, the lesson was a little long, but our prayer was edifying. I pray, uh, I pray um, you, 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 you stayed focused with me, alright? I want to give all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Wa Abad Babal and Shalom.